Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Torres, and I am the marketing manager with StreetWave. We have here Phil Bowers today with Gramstream that will be presenting the new product overview. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in the questions form, and Phil will go ahead and answer those. Um, and I will go ahead and have Phil take it away. Thanks, Angela. Thanks for setting this up. Um, and welcome, everybody. Thanks for being with us here today. My name is Phil Bowers. I'm the uh, senior marketing manager here at Grandstream. Uh, basically, today's webinar is going to focus on uh, most of the new stuff that we have come out with, uh, with a focus on probably the last six to eight months. But we're going to start off by covering our um, conferencing equipment, which is all relatively new uh, within the last year and a half or so. Uh, but it's something that we're really focusing on here. And it's a lot of, some new developments in, in our uh, voice and video conferencing portfolio that we want to tell you about. Um, so anyway, um, you know, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks, Angela, for setting it up. Uh, obviously, we you know, really value our relationship with StreakWave, um, and I definitely recommend StreakWave for any of your grand stream needs. Uh, very knowledgeable staff, great salespeople, really will help you find what you need and make the most of it. So definitely recommend StreakWave. Um, so, without further ado, let's get going. Um, I always like to do a quick little introduction into Grandstream for those of you that uh, might be new to us or not all that familiar with us. Uh, so we were founded back in 2002. We were one of the original manufacturers of SIP devices. We started out back in 2002, which was towards the beginning of, uh, or almost the very beginning of the, the major advancement of the SIP marketplace. Uh, we started with one and two line analog telephone adapters and one and two line IP phones and we have, oh, as you can see, really grown over the last 15 years into a full business communication solutions provider. Pretty much anything on the endpoint or the, uh, we'll say, back end server side of things for a SIP unified video conferencing, or excuse me, for a SIP, for a SIP unified communications network uh, we provide. Uh, we're best known for our IP phones. Uh, we have a great portfolio of IP phones, IP video phones, uh, ranging, uh, covering a lot of different needs, a lot of different features, basically from simple to high-end use. Um, we have a variety of video conferencing solutions now, which I'll tell you about, audio conferencing solutions, um, IP video surveillance cameras. We also do the back-end networking equipment. Our UCM series of IP PBXs is one of the most popular um, on-premise IP PBXs in the world. Uh, we also make a variety of analog telephone adapters um, and VoIP gateways. We do primarily serve that small to medium-sized business marketplace. That's kind of been our sweet spot over the years, um, basically because of the, the price per performance price to feature ratio that we offer on our products, which I think you'll you'll find is better than what you're going to get and more than what you're going to get in terms of price to features than any other manufacturer in the world. Uh, we are headquartered here in Boston, Massachusetts, here in the United States. Uh, we have a variety of offices worldwide, 12 offices worldwide. Um, some of the ones that, some of our offices are not listed here, kind of listed the major ones here, three in the United States, uh, two in China. Uh, Morocco, Venezuela, Netherlands, we're also in Malaysia, we're also in Spain, we're also in the UK. Uh, so we have 12 offices throughout the world, headquartered here in Boston. If you're ever in Boston, stop by and see us. We're actually uh, right down the street from Fenway Park. Uh, so if you're ever in town, definitely stop by and see us uh, here, in, <clears throat> here in Boston. But what those other offices allow us to do is to simply to offer um, you know, local support and local stocking options um, and going back to the support side of things, offer support in local languages and local time zones. Basically, uh, we're able to support any Grandstream user anywhere in the world because of the many offices and the many support options that we have. All right. Um, kind of touched on this. I'll just go through this real quickly in regards to all of the different products that we make. Um, you know, we are a full unified communication solution provider. Um, obviously, we started out with ATAs and IP phones and have really grown into a, you know, full communication solutions provider. Pretty much, as I mentioned, everything you're going to need, whether it be an endpoint or a back-end uh, back IP PBX or networking equipment with ATAs, IP PBXs. And then all of your, you know, your voice and your video endpoints, your surveillance endpoints, surveillance, uh, excuse me, video conferencing endpoints as well. So this is pretty much the agenda for today. I'm going to do my best to try to keep this to 45 minutes. Um, try to f finish around 
Uh, it'll be 2.45 to 3 o'clock my time, which I believe would be 11.45 to 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time. Um, lots, of, lots of stuff to cover, lots of information. I'll try to go through it as best, as quickly as I can without leaving out anything important. But as uh, Angela mentioned, any questions, feel free to type them to us through the chat. Um, if I don't answer your question through the chat during the webinar, it's just because I'm going to save it for the end because I think it's a good question. But anything related to what we're talking about, I'll try to answer them as we go. All right, so we're going to start off with talking about our uh, GVC series of video conferencing um, devices. Uh, the GVC series basically is uh, it's our first entrance into the video conferencing marketplace. Uh, we came out with the GVC 3200. There's now a second model, the GVC 3202, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, we came out with this just about a year and a half ago. It was uh, June of 2015. Um, and I always like to kind of give tell the story of why we got into video conferencing, what we saw in the marketplace that led us to jump into this marketplace. Um, basically what we saw and what a lot of other manufacturers or a lot of other companies, a lot of other businesses have seen is that video conferencing traditionally was because of a couple of factors, because of how expensive it was, because of how complicated it was, and because of the lack of flexibility, it really was geared only towards large enterprises, companies that had really large, um, they had you know large spending power, they had large IT teams that could manage it and train the employees and the staff on how to use it, um, and also traditionally the other you know these enterprises because of that's what um, you know video conferencing because of as I mentioned the price and the complexity meant for enterprises, it also traditionally locks you into using one specific platform. It doesn't give you the flexibility to use a variety of different platforms now or in the future. Um, and so we took all of that, those three major barriers, again, the, the high cost of video conferencing, the complexity of it, and the lack of flexibility, and we designed our GVC series to break down all of those barriers. And because of that, I really believe it is a video conferencing solution that does not exist outside, elsewhere on the market with all of the things, all of the features that it does, all of the platforms it supports, and how easy it is to use, install, without sacrificing on any high-end video features. You're going to get a high-end video conferencing device with our GVC 3200. All of the high-end video features and, and um, hardware features that you're going to get with higher end platforms uh, or more expensive platforms. We're going to give you full access to 1080p video, support for up to three monitors, a PTZ camera with a 9 or 12 times zoom. The camera's got an MCU built into it, which I'll tell you about uh, on the next slide. Um, and to really make that even better, the best things about this device are the top three bullet points there. Easy installation, easy to use, easy interoperability. The device is installed in three quick and easy steps. There's no all you know. There's no microphones to calibrate or back end other servers or MCUs to connect to. All you're doing is connecting this device to your network, connecting this device to your um, sorry, connecting this device to your network, connecting this device to your TV monitors, and connecting it to a speaker or microphone, which we include. And I'll tell you about that coming up. So it's easy to install, three quick and easy steps. It's extremely easy to use. It is one of the only Android-based video conferencing platforms in the world. We have based the entire operating system of the GVC series on Android. It's not a closed, locked-down version of Android. It is open Android, <clears throat> which means we give you full access to the Google Play Store and the ability to download and, and hold video and voice conferences with Skype or Google Hangouts or GoToMeeting, for example. Um, but full access to the Google Play Store, the ability to integrate um, Google calendars, uh, any Google service basically, calendar, Gmail, um, contacts, etc. The ability to sync Android devices with it, cell phones, tablets, etc. And the best thing about it is, and this isn't just me saying it, this is the market telling us this, is the third bullet point there, the easier interoperability or the flexibility of the system. I'll tell you more about this in a second. Basically, this platform can support any, or this device can support any SIP video conferencing platform. It can support any H323 video conferencing platform, and obviously any uh, conferencing, vo video or voice conferencing with any Android application. 
So you kind of put that all together uh, because of all those features, the installation, the easy installation, the easy use, the intuitive use, the flexibility, the state-of-the-art hardware, and that advanced video support, and you kind of combine that with the price point on this device, um, which you can ask Streak with for, and I promise you that um, you'll, this device is offering features and functionality you're not going to find at this price point. Um, it's even offering features and functionalities that you're not going to find at a price point that's three or four times higher than this device. You put all that together, and it's a great option to introduce video conferencing to a new, to a you know, small to medium-sized business or any size business that's not using it. Maybe they thought it was too complicated, too expensive for them, etc. Now you have this device to combat that. It's also a great option for existing video conferencing platforms to add it as an additional endpoint to add conference rooms or offices to an existing SIP or H3C2 platform you already have. So there are two different devices in the GVC series, the GVC 3200 and the GVC 3202. The easy way to think about it is that um, the GVC 3200 is the higher capacity model. Um, basically, it, offered, it has an MCU built into the 3200 that can support and host, that's the keyword there, host, up to a nine-way conference. So the MCU is a piece of equipment that in most video conferencing devices is a completely separate piece of equipment that you either have to buy separately or it's just a completely separate device that you have to integrate with the, the actual camera. And the MCU is where the video mixing is being done. It's a device that takes all the incoming, and the incoming feeds and shows them on a screen um, while sending that you know, video feeds out to everybody on the conference. So the MCU being built into our GVC allows it to host locally uh, video conferences with just that device, meaning that you can put it as just an extension on an IP PBX or a hosted PBX, or just do simple in-network IP to IP calls. And this device itself, basically, the easy way to say is that it has a nine-way video conference bridge built into it. That's what the MCU is. Whereas the 3202 can support the built-in um, MCU can host up to a three-way conference. Um, if you're using a cloud platform, um, the, obviously the mixing is being done in the cloud and the MCU, local MCU, doesn't really matter. And in that case, the 3202 is a great option for you because the mixing is not being done locally, it's being in the cloud and the device. 3202 is a little bit cheaper than the 3200, um, so a little bit more cost effective for you for cloud endpoints, or excuse me, for cloud platforms. Um, you see some of the other specs here on the device, um, the two devices. The uh, other major differences other than the MCU, they're highlighted in, in, in white there. Um, the 3200 has three times HDMI output, which allows you to connect it to up to uh, three TV monitors, where the 3202 has two HDMI outputs, allowing you to connect it to up to uh, two HD monitors. A little bit of a difference in the lens there. 12 times zoom on the 3200, 9 times zoom on the 3202. Uh, the camera does have a full 180 degree pan tilt zoom ability, the ability to basically look directly left or directly right, anything in between, directly or straight up, straight down um, as well. Um, other minor difference between the devices is the 3200 has Wi Fi, the 3202 does not. However, I would, you know, nine times out of ten, you probably shouldn't be using Wi-Fi for video conferencing anyway. We're always going to recommend for the best connection that you use the gigabit ports built into it. Um, but if you're doing in-network or demoing it, the Wi-Fi on the 3200 is, is pretty useful for you there. Um, other than that, you can kind of go through here and look at some of the other features. As I mentioned, we could do a webinar that lasted an hour just on these devices. Just trying to go through and give you an overview of them here quickly. Um, you can go to our website to get a lot more information on these devices, um, some guides on how to set them up as well. Obviously, you can also, any questions or anything you're curious about, feel free to ask it through the chat. Um, so I mentioned earlier, this is the last thing on the GVC devices. I mentioned earlier that um, the feedback we've gotten from the market, and specifically a couple of major market research firms, is that this device is a potential game changer because of what you see here on the screen. We give you the ability, because it supports SIP and because it supports H323, and it's obviously an Android device, and it's a SIP device. I guess I just said that. But it, there's so many different ways that you can use this device, and you can use this device 
for all of these platforms or multiple platforms all at the same time. It also gives you the ability to, uh, you know, moving forward to pick and choose what platforms you're going to use. Do I have access to multiple platforms? Um, so to go through this, the first option is IP Video Talk. It's our own cloud platform. I'll tell you about that on the next slide. Um, the biggest thing here is number two there, the support for any SIP or H323 platforms. You've seen some of the ones that we've tested with there on the screen. There are other ones, Zoom, Tele, uh, Telelabs is there, Zoom, um, Starleaf, um, just to name a couple that aren't on here. Uh, so any third-party SIP or H323 video conferencing platform will be supported by this device because it's a SIP endpoint, essentially, or because it's an H323 endpoint. Um, as I mentioned, it's also Android, so you can, you know, I've talked about all the Android functionality, but in terms of conferencing here, we're talking about ac full access to the Google Play Store and therefore Skype and Google Hangouts and GoToMeeting and all that, uh, all those great apps. And then obviously what I talked about a, a moment ago, the ability, um, because it is a SIP endpoint and has the, the you know, basically uh, video conferencing bridge, which is the MCU built in, just make an extension on PBX, on a hosted PBX, on a hosted platform, um, and there you go. you got a video conferencing system set up right there by just creating one device as an extension. So, lots, so many different ways to use the platform now or in the future. Use them all at the same time. Use one, pick and choose. Lots of different options there. Excuse me. All right. Um, so now that I told you about the um, video conferencing devices, I'm just going to real quickly tell you about our GAC 2500. This is our first, um, this is our first in, uh, conference phone, basically conference room, conference table phone, uh, how, whatever you want to call it. Um, this device, I should say, it ships with all GVC devices. If you buy a GVC 3202 or 3200, you will get a GAC 2500 at no extra cost in the box with it. You can also purchase these devices separately. Um, so similarly to the video conferencing marketplace, I uh, saw a lot of weaknesses, holes in the uh, conference phone marketplace, which led us to build the GAC 2500 the way that we did. Um, you see some of the great aspects of it here on the screen. Uh, offers a variety of mobility, both physical mobility in terms of what you use it worth and functional mobility in terms of how you use it. Um, what I'm talking about there is on the physical mobility part, it has integrated Wi-Fi, which means you can take this device anywhere and use it and hold a call anywhere, whether it be an Android call. This is an Android device, I should mention. This is an Android device, open Android, um, so that you can take this device anywhere and with the Wi-Fi, use, uh, make a call um, through Wi-Fi using a SIP account or an Android app that you might have on the device, allows you to take it anywhere and use it anywhere. Also, it's integrated Bluetooth, which allows you to essentially use this device as a Bluetooth speaker for, um, you know, um, the, the main use of the Bluetooth is to pair it with our GVC 3200 and 3202, which do have built-in Bluetooth, so you can pair the audio um, just wirelessly through Bluetooth. You can also pair your mobile device with this guy through Bluetooth. Um, I have mine paired with a lot of the GACs in our office. Uh, I, you know, get a call on my iPhone, I can walk into... Uh, conference room and just switch the call over to the to the GAC 2500 and then transfer it back to my phone later if I want. In terms of functional mobility, again, uh, it's a SIP device, six SIP accounts, uh, so access to six different SIP accounts, and it's also a Android device, so full access to the Google Play Store to hold audio conferences through Google Hangouts, Skype, etc. Has a built-in seven-way conference bridge, which is pretty neat, actually. A lot of Conference phones do not have com um, embedded conference bridges built into them. You don't have to rely on your PBX or your provider to offer you one. This device has one built in. Um, we talked about it being Android. Because it's Android, it, you know, it's just so easy to use that enhanced user experience, all delivered on a very sleek, very easy to use 4.3-inch capacitive touchscreen. Um, everything is fully editable and controllable through the web user interface, which is the same for the GVC. All of our con all of our devices of you know phones, audio, video conferencing can all be controlled by the web user interface. All the features and functionality of the device. You put all that together, and it really just offers you a lot of different functionality and features and, and different ways to use this conference phone that you're going to get from most other conference phones out on the market. All right, so I admit that I am moving a little slow here, so I'll pick it up. Just to finish up on the GAC, 
um, anything I didn't mention here. Six, six lines, six zip accounts, uh, seven-way conference bridge. It has dual gig, gigabit network ports. Um, it act, you can pair two of these devices together for really large rooms or for two different rooms. Um, and you can pair them either by directly connecting them or I believe you can also pair them through Bluetooth. All right, so the last thing that I'll mention on our conferencing before we turn over to talk about uh, the newer the products, the other products we've come out with in the last couple of months, um, just want to talk about IP Video Talk real fast. IP Video Talk is our own um, cloud-based platform. It has been developed entirely in-house by us here at Grandstream. Um, every Grandstream GVC device ships with a pre-installed and preset IP Video Talk account. Um, IP Video Talk basically allows you, as you see here, to hold meetings or webinars, online meetings or webinars that can be attended, um, can be attended from Grandstream GVC devices by phone users with support for PSTN lines. We have a mobile app for Android and for iPhone. Um, and the other great thing about it is um, we, it's a web, based on WebRTC, so with WebRTC browsers like Firefox or Chrome, you can attend meetings without downloading plugins or software. Um, it just streams right through the browser. We support all other browsers, but Firefox and Chrome are WebRTC browsers, which means that you can attend meetings without basically just clicking a link and going right into the email streaming in your browser. So head on over to IPVideoTalk.com, check it out. Uh, we've got a variety of different plans. Uh, some really cost-effective plans, as I mentioned. It's great to uh, turn these GVC devices into true plug-and-play devices, um, in which you know when you get when you get a device counts pre-installed on it, all you've got to do is go on to ipvideotalk.com or go to your go to Streakwave to activate those accounts, um, and then right away you don't have to set anything up, and you can hold meetings and webinars with other GVCs, with phone users, with uh, mobile users through the app and with web users. So head on over to ipvideotalk.com and check that out. Um, real quickly, here are the four different plans that we currently offer um, for IP Video Talk. Uh, plans for 8, 25, 50, and 100 participants. Various costs. Um, all of them are going to be able to support all GVC devices, so you can disregard the supported devices there on the bottom. All of them HD audio, HD video, VoIP and phone audio, screen sharing, etc. So head on over to ipvideotalk.com uh, for more information on IP Video Talk, which is Grandstream's own in-house developed cloud video conferencing and web conferencing platform. All right, so now let's go through um, the rest of the products that we're here to talk about here today. Uh, so in terms of the newly released products, we're going to focus on these three products here. Um, and a couple of these, you know, most of these we can go through very quickly. Um, <clears throat> our HT HTA2 and HTA12, uh, our new, new line of analog telephone adapters. We have um, a new updated set of decked cordless IP phones and our new UCM6200 series, which is just our updated um, IP PBS. And then towards the end, uh, I'm going to real quickly, the last five minutes, finish up by talking about a couple of new products that we're going to release within the next couple of weeks or in the door camera in the middle. In the case of the door camera, probably the beginning of next year. Um, so we'll talk about these uh, the new GXP 1700s, our upcoming door camera, and our first wireless access point. And towards the end of the webinar for five or ten minutes. All right, so let's talk about the deck phones. Um, these are frankly products that we have been getting asked about for a year at least. Um, this is our second. Basically, our second series of deck phones, I'm sure many of you knew the, the DP710 and 715 fairly well. Um, and so a couple years later, we now have a brand new set of updated deck phones um, with some great new features and functionalities that we didn't support on our previous set. Um, so the first major difference is just from looking at the picture is the base station, our base station is now a completely separate device. Um, those of you that knew our previous deck phones, the base station was actually built into the uh, cradle for one of the handsets, which frankly kind of limited you to, you know, ideally you would put a base station somewhere that's most centrally located in the office, but if it's got a phone attached to it, it has to be near somebody that's going to use the phone. So now the, date, the base station, which is the DP750, is a completely separate device. You can put it in your server room, you can mount it on the ceiling, you can put it anywhere 
within your office or within any office or any uh, home, warehouse, store, um, then it's going to be best centrally located to extend range throughout the whole premises. Um, so the DP750 is the base, the DP720 is the handset. Um, it gives you up to a 300 meter range outdoors, a 50 meter range indoors. Um, the, the big new things about these devices, I just want to see, yeah, okay. The big new things about these devices, uh, there's four major things. Obviously, I just told you the first one is it's got a different, the base station is now separate. You can put it wherever you want. Um, and then looking at the handset itself, it is uh, H, it has HD audio. Our previous uh, deck phone series did not support HD audio. It's got a color screen operating system, as you can see there. It just makes it a little bit easier and more intuitive to use. And it also has a headphone jack right on the device itself. It's got a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, where our previous deck phones did not actually have a head. Excuse <coughs> me, a headset jack. <coughs> excuse me, just had to grab a drink of water there. One thing I'll say real fast now, because I think it's coming up on some additional slides. Um, uh, you see Broadsoft and Metasoft, and it says pending. Um, we actually, I should have removed this. We actually, a couple of weeks ago, announced that our deck phones are now supported by uh, Broadsoft. Uh, Metaswitch, I believe so as well, but Broadsoft we publicly announced. But the reason why you're going to see Broadsoft and Metaswitch logos on these slides is just because we find that our resellers, our users, our partners, our distributors, and the service providers that we and they all work with are the two most popular platforms that those service providers work with are Broadsoft and Metaswitch. You can go to our website, go to the partner section of our website, and you can find all of the different platforms that we are compatible with. Many more in addition to just Broadsoft and Metaswitch, but we put Broadsoft and Metaswitch on here just because we find, uh, in our experience, that those are the two most popular um, that uh, the service providers that us, our partners, and our resellers work with are Broadsoft and Metaswitch backed service providers. <clears throat> So each DP750, which is the base, can be paired with up to five handsets, which uh, five DP720 handsets. Um, the system in total can support up to 10 different SIP accounts. So the, the base station can support 10 SIP accounts, and each handset can also support 10 SIP accounts. So you can have 10 SIP accounts all loaded on each one of these phones. You can have two, 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 and two. It's, you know, again, fully up to you. Basically, each handset and each base station can access up to 10 different SIP accounts. Uh, so lots of different options there to extend SIP accounts, to have uh, handset support up to 10 different SIP accounts um, on a DEX network. In terms of the voice codex, the big thing here is the we now support G722, which is the HD wideband codec you see at the top. Um, and Opus, which is a new, uh, pretty popular new high-definition uh, codec. Those are the two big ones there, um, but you'll see that we pretty much support every major codec on these deck phones the same way that we do with uh, pretty much all of our other IP phones. In terms of accessibility, I talked about this earlier. It's got that 3.5 millimeter headset jack right on the device itself. It does have a speakerphone for a hands-free mode. It ships with a belt clip, which allows you to just, you know, Clip it on your belt, basically, and walk around the warehouse, the store, your office, your home, etc. Um, it also kind of un uniquely has a micro USB port. That's how the device is charged. It does come with the charger, um, but if you use a micro USB for any of your other devices to charge them, that same device, that same charger, can charge your deck phone as well. Um, so. You know, kind of the last thing here on the on the deck phones before we move into, I believe, the ATAs are next. Um, you know, one of the best things in terms of talking about uh, how these deck phones and the mobility they offer can make you more productive, can ensure you make your team more productive, can ensure that you never miss a call. There are these great things. I'm sure many of you, or if not everyone, is familiar with ring groups and hunt groups. Basically, it's just many couple of different ways, four main ways to set how the base station distributes incoming calls out to the handsets. Um, so for example, you know, the, the example you see there is circular mode, in which if a, a call comes into the base station on a certain SIP account, all of the phones will ring sequent. You can set the phones basically to ring sequentially, to go through and ring one phone. If that phone doesn't answer, to ring the next one, and, set, and so on. You have the ability to set them all to ring at the same time. Um, 
you have uh, what a couple of different options here. Um, those are the two most popular that I see are the, um, you know, having them all ring at the same time or having them go through a predestined order. Um, great for an office, great for a store to take incoming calls, great for your home as well. Um, so some great features uh, through these ring groups and home groups and different ways that you can have those incoming calls distributed. All right, so that's a quick wrap up on the our new DP750 and DP720. Now real quickly, this should actually only take a couple of minutes probably here. Uh, we'll go through the HT802 and HT812. <clears throat> so the HT802 and HT812 are the first two new members of our new um, HT800 series of ATAs. And before I go and start describing these in depth, what I should probably lead in with is that great, we are the world leader in ATAs. We manufacture more ATAs and we have more deals with large service providers around the world for ATAs than any other company in the world. Um, we manufacture and produce millions of these devices a year and we work with some of the largest and most well-known service providers in the world to supply ATAs for them, either as Grandstream ATAs or in you know, a white label OEM for them. Um, so the HT802 and the HT812, uh, basically the, the, the driving reason for this new um, series of ATAs and the things that you'll notice first is it's got a new look and feel to it. It's got a sleeker look, it's got a sleeker design. Kind of the thing that initially led us to get into this, um, and actually here, I'm going to, there we go, this is what I wanted to show you first. Um, <clears throat> right off the bat, this is what jumps out at you. Obviously, ATAs are, are many cases, especially if you're working with service providers. They're being used by end users that are used to using analog devices. They're not super tech savvy. And in that case, the most important thing is that device be incredibly easy to set up for anybody and be incredibly easy to basically look at and figure out if there's something wrong with it without actually having to go in and troubleshoot it. So we now have color-coded ports and we have um, LED indicators on the front, which will just tell you if the device is powered on, if um, you know one or two different, or later on up to four different SIP accounts are being supported by the device, and if it has an internet connection. Uh, so to kind of go back to back to the devices here, so the the you know off the bat one of the big thing is really the uh, you know the, the look and feel of it, uh, more more of a sleek look color-coded ports, LED indicators. Um, so the HT802 is uh, pretty much a replacement or a new version of our HT702. Um, it has your standard 10 100 megabit per second ports, supports two SIP accounts, two FXS ports, um, anything else worth calling out here, three-way conferencing, all of our ATAs support T38 fax, variety of other um, you know, high-end telephony features which are supported um, by our ATAs, traditional VoIP features that analog devices don't traditionally have access to that we're able to extend analog devices through any of our ATAs, these ones or any of the older series. The HT812, you see there's a couple of things highlighted in red. Um, it is our first ATA ever to support gigabit speeds. So uh, 10, 100, excuse me, up to 1,000 um, megabyte per second speeds through the two gigabit ports. Uh, which is able to extend those gigabit speeds to analog devices. The other major thing other than the gigabit ports of the HT812 is it has an integrated NAT router, uh, which we found it's, it's advantageous uh, for a lot of businesses to be able to get VoIP service and have a router from one device. So that's kind of why we've built that into the HT812. We have a cover, a couple of older ATAs that do support um, do have an integrated NAT router as well. Uh, other major difference is we we're able to uh, support HD audio, one of the first um, ATAs in the world that's been able to offer HD audio to analog phones, either through that G722 codec or the Opus codec. You can look at some of the other features that you see here on the screen. But again, so the two new, two new models of our new HT800 series of ATAs, the HT802 is a standard two-sip account ATA, um, with a 110, 100 megabit per second port, one standard port. And the HT812 is our first ever gigabit um, ATA, which has an NAT router built in, supports HD audio. 
Talk to show you that. Uh, we talked about that in terms of the LED indicators. I'll just leave this up on the screen here for just a moment. All right. Uh, I talked about this earlier. Um, you know, one of the great things about our ATAs is they're able to extend a lot of great high-end VoIP features, features that uh, analog devices or landlines traditionally don't offer you, um, such as what you see on the screen here and much more, multi-way conferencing, transfer hold, um, call waiting, caller ID. Um, our ATAs are able to support a, on pretty much every major caller ID um, standard out there. Uh, message reading indicator, multi-language prompts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we pretty much talked about this earlier in terms of voice codecs. Um, the big thing here is that uh, you see the, the codec supported, um, and the HD812 is able to support HD audio to support of that Opus codec. All of our ATAs, I mentioned this earlier, have the ability to support T38 fax. It allows you to take an analog fax and integrate it with your IP network um, so that, you know, for example, you could have <coughs> your incoming faxes distributed, sent out through email um, through your IP network. Or just so you don't have to have a separate, completely separate fax line, you can now, you know, through um, fax integration, T38 fax with any of our ATAs, have the ability to integrate that fax with your IP network so that they're not two different devices, two different networks. We talked about this, that the uh, HD812 has an integrated NAT router. A couple of our other ATAs do as well. And again, this is ideal just because it allows one device that service providers can provide to their customers that gives them voice service and routing capability. In terms of provisioning, just like all of our other devices, um, this is a, uh, we've actually, so for those of you that have been using our ATAs for a while, um, you'll probably recognize the screenshot of the user interface, which looks pretty much the same as one of our older interfaces. We've actually kept the interfaces on the newer devices exactly the same, so there's nothing new for you to learn or to get used to. It's the same user interface, same web user interface as our other ATAs. Obviously, for provisioning, and this kind of goes to most all of our products, lots of different options here um, that we're talking about here. AES encryption, XML config files, TRO69, um, as well as HTTP, HTTPS, and TFTP um, use of the web user interface, and also DHCP option 66. Uh, just as a teaser real fast, uh, I believe two weeks from now we will be coming out with another, announcing another new ATA. This is our HT814. This is exactly the same as the HT812, except it, as you see there, it gives you four FXS ports and support for four SIP accounts. So it just basically gives you the ability to support two additional uh, devices through those two FXS ports and uh, supports up to four SIP accounts ra rather than two, which the HD802 and the HD812 support. All right. We are making pretty good progress. I'm going to try to wrap this up in about 15 minutes, so I'm going to go probably about 10 minutes longer than I thought. I do apologize for that. It doesn't look like anyone's dropped off, so it looks like uh, hopefully you know this information is as inf in interesting and valuable to you you know, as it is to us over here at Grand Street. Um, so our UCM 6200 series, I'm actually going to start with this slide here. For those of you that are, our UCM 6100 series, which um, came out, it's been on the market for just about three and a half years now. We came out with it um, in uh, the, I believe, June of 2013. Uh, the UCM 6100 series has, you know, really became one of the leading IP PBX um, platforms, or excuse me, on-premise IP PBXs in the world. Um, actually, I'm going to skip back to this slide here real fast. Um, because of a couple of different things, and, and the story honestly goes similar to the video conferencing story I told you, is that when we got into um, we're looking at PBXs, we saw that most of them were catered towards large enterprises. They were extremely expensive, they required huge IT teams, and they didn't include every feature. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with licensing fees. A lot of popular PBX manufacturers um, or even hosted providers will essentially sell you a plain box and then to add features and to add users, you have to pay more money to add those features. <clears throat> you have to pay more money to add users year in and year out. 
and really when you put all that together and the price points that they came at, it was small, SMBs, small to medium sized businesses were again being ignored by this marketplace. And we thought that small to medium sized businesses, if they had access to all of those high end enterprise grade features um, in a way that was affordable to them, easy for them to manage and did not include license fees, that it would allow SMBs to actually you know, increase their business, to be more productive, to compete with businesses that they otherwise wouldn't be able to compete with because of these great new affordable, easy to use communication options that they had. Um, so that's what we set out and that's exactly what we built. Uh, the UCM series, the 6100 series and the new 6200 series, which I'll tell you about in a second, um, really just extends enterprise grade unified communication features, voice, video, mobility, and data features as you see over there on the left to um, small to medium sized businesses is an easy to manage IP PBX um, that does not require any licensing fees. Um, it has a built in configuration manager essentially with a setup wizard and a zero config, zero configuration manager that's built into it. And it includes all hardware and software for the lifetime of the device. And one of the best things there is that we're constantly adding features and functionality. And I'm going to show, I'm going to prove this to you and show you some of the stuff we've added recently, some great new features we've added um, that can be accessed just by downloading new firmware. No, no price to upgrade. We are, um, you know, all of the hardware and all of the software is included for the lifetime and all of those updates will always be free. Um, so the 6200 series is essentially a continuation of the UCM 6100 series. For essentially for full disclosure here, um, the processing chip that we were using in the UCM 6100 series was discontinued or is no longer being made by that manufacturer um, and therefore we had to put a different chip in it and because of certain requirements, because it has a different chip, we had to give it a different name. Um, so that's why, but again, the UCM 6200 series is basically a continuation of the 6100 series. Um, it has three different models, a 2FXO port model, a 4FXO port model, and an 8FXO port model. Um, we had a 16FXO port model in the 6100 series. Um, if you need a device with 16FXO ports, the UCM 6116, Still a great option, still recommended, still available, will always be supported. Um, so kind of getting diving into the specs of these devices, you kind of see on the right a comparison of the two devices where you'll see that pretty much the, um, the two and the four port version are exactly the same, uh, same amount of ports, same amount, uh, same, same capacity in terms of the ability to support 500 devices, same concurrent call support, either 30 or 45, same amount of conference bridges, et cetera. Um, and when you get to the eight port version, if you're looking for a little bit of an enhancement from the 6100 series, the eight port version is a great option for you, where we have made it a little bit more powerful, given it the ability to support up to 800 users and 100 concurrent calls. So that's more users and more concurrent calls than any of the other 61 or 6200 series models. Um, so if you're looking for an upgrade, the 6208 is a great option for you. Um, two minor things that we added um, into the 6200 series that are in the 6100 series, you see them at the bottom there. All devices, all of the 6200 series models have a DHCP server in them, which just makes installation uh, so much easier by having that CACP server which can assign IP addresses to your endpoints built in. We also, through all our devices, have the ability now to support switched, dual network, or router mode. So any of these devices um, have basically the ability to be an NAT router, which the 6102 actually had, um, and none of the other 6100 series models, but now all 6200 series models have, can, can support routing mode, also switched and dual network mode, as well as that DHCP server. All right, so um, you know, just to kind of wrap up these major details on the 6100, 6200 series, you see it over there, uh, the specs, uh, the second bullet point there, the major difference between all the devices are the amount of FXO ports and concurrent calls, and you can see there that the last 
number in the model name tells you how many FXO ports there are. Um, all of the devices obviously support gigabit, uh, have gigabit ports, support gigabit speeds. Um, PoE Plus, which allows the device to be, the UCM to be powered by, um, excuse me, to be powered by PoE, does not allow the UCM to give out PoE. That's something important that I should mention. Um, various amounts of conference bridges on all the devices that support either 25 or 32. Um, I believe each device will have either three or five different conference bridges. Zero con configuration provisioning, which basically just will go out and auto, allows the UCM to auto discover any endpoint you add to the same network as the UCM. Um, and then you can zero config them, basically have the device configurate them all for you. You can provide the device a set of extension ranges and general rules to do that. You can allow it to do whatever it wants, or you can obviously configure and provision everything manually. Um, one thing that's, that is important to mention, and I'll just leave this up here on the screen real fast, in terms of some of the basic and more advanced features that we offer, and, and this really goes to show you that every, literally almost every high-end enterprise-grade feature um, that allows businesses to be more productive, to have more professional and high-end communication platforms, telephony platforms, um, are supported by this device. All of these features and functionalities are included. The ones in orange there at the bottom are things that we have added within the last couple, or I believe it's within the last six to eight months, some of which I'm going to run through real quickly here. Um, but one last thing that I'll mention here on the UCM 6200 series, actually a couple of additional things that we'll run through. Um, but just in case anyone's you know, concerned, maybe you have a 6100 series model, um, they're still available through, uh, I mean, I'm honestly not 100% sure if Streetwave has them, but they're still available. We will always support them. Um, the firmware that we're going to start rolling out for the 6200 series or that we already have also works with the 6100 series, so we will continue to come out with new firmware, uh, new features for the 6100 series as well as the 6200 series, and both of those devices will share firmware going forward. All right, so that's that. Um, just real quickly, some of the last things on this UCM that I like to point out. Everything is fully customizable. Um, you see it here, the ability to, you know, call routing, auto attendant, IVR, those are mostly voice features, but everything is fully customizable and you can set it exactly as you want. Multi-level IVRs, auto attendant, call queues, transfer, you know, all of that stuff. Everything in terms of the voice and the video features, as you'll find out in a second, is 100% fully customizable by you, by a reseller, by an installer, or whatnot. Um, the device says it supports video. Any SIP video endpoints supported by this device, and that allows it to, you know, and this is where we're talking about true unified communications. It's not just a voice server. The people. Uh, our PBX is so much more than that. It is consensually be a server or a PBX for any, um, you know, video solution as well as voice or integrated, you know. So you have one network that you can install video phones, voice phones, video surveillance, video conferencing, um, as well as your entire telephony network all on the same network, all sharing extensions, or not sharing extensions, but all, you know, being able to communicate with each other. So, um, you know, again, device, the, our PBXs don't just support voice, um, full support for any SIP video endpoints. It's a great video server as well. A um, couple of last things I like to mention that people always ask about. A full call recording server built into these devices. Um, the recordings would be accessed directly from the web user interface. Um, those recordings can be saved on SD cards or USB drives that you would connect to the UCM. Um, and the recordings can be downloaded and played remotely from anywhere where you basically have a, a network connection. Um, call detail records, another thing we get asked about a lot where you can see, um, you know, great for a lot of businesses um, where you can see phone usage built, uh, broken down by line, date, time, etc. It's is really big in the hospitality industry. Every, obviously, hotels need to track calls so they can bill customers when they're um, leaving. Uh, one thing I'll mention here is uh, for some more detailed CDR functionality, um, head over to the resource section of um, the PBX product page of our website, um, and you can find some more information about a company called CTI Solutions, which has built um, actually more comprehensive CDR software um, 
for our UCM that integrates specifically with the UCM, so that's CTI Solutions um, for some really high-end hospitality level CDR, um, but it does have a full CDR engine built right into it. All right, I'm going to go through these really quickly just because we're I'm dragging on a little bit, and I definitely want to get to uh, just real quickly mention those three upcoming products. So these are some new UCM features, some new stuff new new to all of our UCM 6100 series, 6200 series, and 6510. All of this has been added in about the last six to eight months. And again, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. The first thing is a setup wizard. Uh, as soon as you turn on the device for the first time or reset it, it gives you, basically can walk you through completely setting it up, help you set up and create passwords, network settings, time zone, extensions, and trumps routes. And then once you get that, um, you would have, you know, you would add your endpoints to the same network and then you could use zero config. So between this new setup wizard and auto discovery and zero config for endpoints, Basically, there's almost an automated setup if you want to use it for this entire device, no matter what you're trying to do to set it up initially or to add endpoints to it. We have either a setup wizard or zero config for that. Uh, we now support through the UCM SMS messaging, basically giving you the ability to essentially what it is is send text message from IP phone to IP phone for uh, endpoints connected to or registered to a UCM PBX. Um, this is a pretty pretty big one. We now support faxing through the web user interface. You can send faxes directly through the UCM out, you know, to whatever, whoever you're faxing it to through a web browser. Um, and the important thing to mention here, because the question is always, I don't want to give you know, anybody access to the user interface. This faxing interface, um, I have probably used a bad picture of it here, but you can have this faxing interface set where somebody can access it and all they can do and all they will see is send and receive fax. They wouldn't have access to any of the rest of the settings. They wouldn't be able to change or even see the settings or configuration on PBX. So if you wanted to allow a CEO, a receptionist, salespeople, whoever, to just fax right from their computer, which they can you know, turn anything into a PDF and have it faxed out right from their computer through the UCM um, and any you know, fax lines or fax machines, whatnot, T38 fax lines it's, it's integrated with. You can do that right from any web browser and you can allow people, uh, anybody to do it using an interface where all they can do is send and receive faxes. They can't see or edit anything else. Inbound route multiple mode, uh, this just allows you, you know, this is big for, um, Contact centers is a, is a big one here. Basically, it allows you to um, easily switch between different extensions or, activ or activate different users through entering a star code on the phone. Um, you know, so in case you have phones in a location where they're used by multiple people, somebody can just sit down, enter their own code, and it will load their SIP account on that device, and then they can sign out and let somebody else do the same thing. Multiple devices per registration, we now give you the ability to um, support the same exact extension number on multiple devices, which I was a little surprised, to be honest, to find we couldn't do it earlier, although there are very easy ways around it. Previously with our UCM, if you wanted extension 100 on four different devices like you see here, you had to create extension 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, etc for your different devices and now you can just create extension 100 and it will be and load that extension 100 on multiple different devices. We have the announcement center and basically this is what it allows you to do is to uh, pre-record and store voice prompts within the UCM with a code associated with it and when somebody, an admin goes in and enters a code or a group number, um, or excuse me, uh, somebody from the phone would go in and enter a code or group number, whatever you want to call it, that voice prompt would be played for them. The, you know, the best example here is a school, or the first example that comes to my mind is uh, schools for, um, you know, maybe it's not that big in California, but, you know, for schools out here, I guess, uh, where it snows, or anywhere where it snows, um, you could um, have the ability to basically leave a message in the morning, hey, school is canceled, um, call back tomorrow, um, school is canceled for the day, and that parents, teachers, whoever could just call into that number and find out 
what the deal is. Uh, same thing for any business, for any business announcements. Um, if your business is going to be closed for weather or you know any other special announcements, this announcement center allows you to basically set an announcement that anybody can access by dialing a um, star code. All right, so now yeah, a little bit longer than I thought. I'm going to run through. That pretty much is uh, pretty much it for for the webinar. I'm going to finish up here over the next three, four, five minutes by just introducing you to three upcoming products. Two of them are going to be announced in the next couple of weeks and one of them early next year. But these are some really exciting new stuff that um, you may have heard about, you may not have, but we want to tell you that it's coming so that you can be ready for it and prepare it, um, potentially include it in you know, deals or purchases that you're working on for the end of the year or for next year. So I'm going to start out here with our GWN 7610. Um, basically, what you're going to see throughout the course of the next year, the biggest move for us here at Grandstream, our biggest, one of our biggest expansions is going to be here into the Wi-Fi marketplace. Um, we're going to have a variety of wireless access points, both low-end, mid-range, and high-end, and a variety of routers. Again, both low-end, mid-range, and high-end. We'll have access points for indoor use, which is what the 7610, and we'll have a variety of outdoor weatherproof access points coming as well. So the 7610 is our is the first access point that we are coming out with. We're going to, we should, excuse me, should be able to announce it officially next week. Um, see some of the specs on here on this slide. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one because this really gives you that ability, uh, tells you what's so great about this device. Um, it offers a range, the range is actually wrong there, it's actually 175 meters, which is I believe 550 feet, which is essentially the size of two football or soccer fields. We're able to support 16 different networks, um, whether it be VPN networks or wireless networks per device. You're not going to find too many other APs that are similar in, you know, anywhere near the price point of this that's going to be able to support 16 different networks. Um, it's able to support really high end up to 1.75 gigabit per second speeds, dual, wi dual band Wi-Fi, so both your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz um, platforms. Um, the ability to also support, uh, it says 300 concurrent clients, it's actually 250 plus, it's probably going to end up being 300. Uh, but the ability to support 300 clients, and so that's, you know, any, I, any, phone, any mobile device, anything connected to Wi-Fi per device. So basically what we're, why we're getting into Wi-Fi is we feel that, you know, we've seen a, an opportunity on the marketplace to bring some very powerful high-end devices with high-end functionality and high-end features at price points much lower than what's being offered on the current Wi-Fi marketplace. Basically, again, allowing businesses to do more with what they have without sacrificing on features. So probably the best thing, or one of the best things, another great aspect of this of our Wi-Fi access points, both the GWN 7610 and future access points, is that we have a, we have developed a built-in controller. Um, those of you that know Wi-Fi know that a controller, which is the device that you would use to set up and manage a group of access points, that controller is, either, is usually a completely separate device. It is completely separate software for most other manufacturers. And this is probably the biggest innovation that we're going to bring to the Wi-Fi access point marketplace. We have built, we have taken what other companies sell as a completely separate product or completely separate software. We have taken all of that functionality and built it into the web user interface at no extra cost for all of our GWN uh, 7610 APs and any future AP. And so what that allows you to do is to basically create and manage networks of up to 50 grand stream GWN um, access points that can be managed by one access point. So I have, you know, the first GWN 7610, for example, that I install, I create that as the master on a network, and then I'm able to go in and through that web user interface for that master GWN, 
I can pair other GWNs. I can create, you know, I can go through and for each access point switch which networks or create new networks. I can basically with one access point interface manage, control, and create networks of up to 50 access points with each one having up to 16 different networks. And those networks can be shared by groups of access points. Each one can have different networks. So again, our biggest, if, if you leave with anything here today about what you learned about our upcoming Wi-Fi access points is this built-in controller. Where other, menu, other companies, you need, you know, you need to buy an expensive router that has the controller, or you need to build, buy a separate controller, hardware, software. We build it in. We don't charge you anything extra for it. And with that software, you can control and manage up networks of up to 50 other access points. I'll skip through that. All right, so that is our GWN 7610. Uh, sorry about that. That's our GWN 7610. Keep an eye out for it. We're going to be doing a lot of webinars, a lot of trainings on that device coming up. Um, so keep an eye out for some more information, product launch, product page, and some really in-depth webinars and online trainings we'll be doing for those Wi-Fi products. So the last two things that I will go through very quickly here, I apologize for going a couple of minutes longer than I thought. Um, we will soon release, actually within about two weeks, I believe, our GXP1700 series. These GXP1700 series are going to be our first ever mid-range IP phone. Um, so the way to think about it is currently we have our GXP 1600 series, um, which are essentially more basic um, IP phones for basic users. Um, we have our GXP 2100 series, which are color screen, Bluetooth, with support for a lot of different lines. They're basically high-end devices for high-end users. And now we'll have the 1700 series with a mid-range set of features um, Basically, for um, businesses or for anyone that needs an IP phone, um, that is something that they can grow with. Maybe they have a limited budget at the moment, um, or you know, limited budget at the moment, and they want an attractive phone with features that they can grow with into the future. That can grow with them. The 1700s are great for that. So again, mid-range features, mid-range, uh, mid-range price. Um, there's Three different models in the series. We have our GXP 1760 here. The 1760 has six lines, supports six lines, three different SIP accounts. It's got uh, your six uh, soft keys around the screen. Has uh, The 1700 series models have um, digital BLX speed dial keys, so you can turn those soft keys around the screen, of the, or the line keys, excuse me, into digital BLX speed dial keys right there on the phone which the 1760 can support up to 24 of those. Anything else? Full HD audio. Um, you see it's got a uh, monochrome uh, backlit screen, full HD audio, speakerphone, five-way conferencing. Ha does have a USB port, obviously PoE. Um, electronic hook switch support for Plantronics headsets, as well as an RJ9 headset jack, um, and all of the advanced security features that you're going to get from our other IP phones. And then the other two models in the 1700 series will be the 1780 and the 1782. Both of these models support eight lines, four different SIP accounts. Um, and so you can see with the SIP accounts, support three and four on the 1700s. It falls basically right in between the 1600s and the 2100. 1600s go up to about two or three SIP accounts, and the 2100s go anywhere from three up to 12. Um, the, the only difference between the 1780 and the 1782 is that the 1782 will have gigabit speeds. And because it supports, um, supports that, uh, has the two extra line keys, it gives it the ability to support up to 32 digital BLF speed dial keys rather than 24 on the previous model. All right, and the last, the very last thing that I'm going to show you here uh, in terms of products is our upcoming GDS 3710. This is going to be the first ever door phone that we're going to come out with. It's obviously going to be a SIP door phone. has a built-in RFID chip reader, uh, full, uh, excuse me, full 1080p, 180 degrees, hemispheric lens there. Um, we actually, just a couple of weeks ago, set up a prototype here in our office right outside, and we've been using it for a couple of weeks. Great video quality, great audio quality. It, it's, frankly, it's, it's a very uh, solid 
door phone for controlling facility access. So for office buildings, for apartment buildings, for anything where you need to control the ability to get in and out, whether it be by um, scanning an RFID chip, by entering a code to get in, or by allowing somebody to call somebody else to let them in, that's what this device is going to be great for. It's going to be great for businesses, offices, um, residential, etc. Any and any private building. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the webinar here today. I had two very final thoughts that I'm just going to throw up on the screen real quickly. Um, doesn't need much information. Actually, I'm going to pass on that one. Um, so. It, you know, we have this great Reseller Connect platform portal that we've had going for about three or four years now. Um, I would absolutely recommend you um, go register as a Grandstream reseller through Reseller Connect. It is free. There is no cost to join. There is no membership cost. There's no requirements of you going forward, basically. Um, and specifically here in North America, one of the best advantages of being um, a member of our Reseller Connect program is if you're in North America, that gives you priority technical support. That means that you're guaranteed a call back within two hours if you're a member of Reseller Connect here in North America. Um, whereas if you're not, you're going to basically have to go through the regular queue of support tickets and support calls, um, which to be honest with you, um, you, you're, if you're a reseller, I'm telling you, you're going to want that priority technical support. It's going to make your life a lot easier in case anything ever happens. Um, and also through uh, Reseller Connect, you know, we're giving access to exclusive product webinars, advanced notification of products, uh, special firmwares, access to product uh, marketing content, uh, images, graphics. Um, we're going to let you know about new stuff, news and announcements that's going on here at Grandstream. Um, special firmware, as I mentioned earlier, and basically qualification as a Grandstream certified reseller, which you can use on your website, your business cards, your own marketing materials, etc. And as I mentioned, that two-hour priority technical support call back here in North America. All right, so that is it for the webinar. Um, I didn't see any questions that were really... Oh, let me go back there. Um, didn't notice any questions that come in, although I'm not sure if I was actually set up to be able to see any of the questions that came in. Um, but if you do have any questions at any point in time, right, or anything that we weren't able to answer during the webinar, feel free to type them over to us now, um, and I will do, you know, I'll be able to answer questions. All right, so we have one question here. Um, how have you hardened this version of Android to protect it against malware? Um, huh, wow, that's that's a that's a honestly, it's a really good question. Um, as a marketing guy, I think that's a little technically over my head. Um, what I will do is I will go ask one of our engineers that question right after this webinar, and I will give you that answer. Um, what I would say. You know, just, just from the marketing side, the, the answer that I would have for that question is that um, one of the things, one of the reasons why we're one of the only companies in the world using Android for VoIP or IP is because Android's obviously built to be a mobile platform. It took, uh, you know, couple, I think six months to a year for us to basically figure out and learn how to use Android and turn it into a VoIP platform. And because we're using Android as a, you know, we're basically taking the Android interface and using it as a VoIP platform, an IP platform, it's protected by all of the IP and the VoIP securities, your TLS, your SRTP, blacklist, whitelist, HTTPS, all that kind of stuff. Um, so from the marketing side of thing, that's, that's my answer. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit more technical than that, I will go ask um, our engineers at, um, right after this webinar ends, and I'll get that answer to Angela, and she can get it out to you guys. All right, so uh, I'll hang around for a couple of more minutes to, in case anybody has any additional questions. But for everybody else, um, really appreciate you being here on the webinar today. I know I went, uh, went about 20 minutes longer than I thought I would, so I apologize for that. Um, but a lot of new stuff, a lot of good information, a lot of stuff that I wanted to uh, make sure everybody knew and understand. Uh, a lot of really innovative stuff that we're doing over here at Grandstream. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your busy schedule to be with us um, here as we're approaching the holiday season. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I definitely recommend Streakwave for all your grand string needs. We've been working with them um, for, I believe, four or five years now. Uh, specifically out on the West Coast, they're, um, they're, our best, they're probably our, our, you know, the reseller that we've had, the, or excuse me, distributor, we have the longest and the best relationship with. I know they ship throughout the country, so anywhere you are, Streakwave is a great option for grand stream. As I mentioned earlier, not only are they... Um, you know, they're very knowledgeable in term on the technical side, uh, figuring out or helping you learn how to get the most out of what equipment you buy, what you can integrate it with. Um, and the other thing I really like about Streakwave is the, all of the other stuff that they sell in addition to Grandstream, you know, all the networking equipment, the Wi-Fi stuff, et cetera, um, that Streakwave is frankly one of the experts on here in this market. Um, so. Thanks, everyone, for being with us here today. We'll hang around for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type into the chat. Um, but I think we're going to sign off for the audio now. I want to thank everybody for being with us. Um, hope you have a great rest of the day. And as it's Thursday, um, hope you all have a great weekend. And I'll be the first to wish everybody, as it is now November 3rd, I'll be the first to wish you all happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. Um, we hope to see you again soon. Take care.